Heavenly Father, we come this morning to recognize you and the grace that you have extended to us, Jesus. Understanding that you are the Alpha and the Omega, our Father, our friend, our blessed, blessed Savior, Jesus. We know, Father, that a week from today, Jesus, we will celebrate something very special, Father. Being covered in your blood, being saved from our own sins, Jesus. We know that we live in a world, Father, where you are the creator. That nothing happens out of your control, Jesus. Knowing and understanding, Father, that the events of this week, Jesus, you sit uh, and you're looking and you're watching, Father. Covering those that are hurting, Jesus. Welcoming home those, Father, that knew you. We pray for the families as well as the ones that have been hurt, Jesus. We pray for, Father, that those that are opening up your doors, Jesus, and understanding and they're confused, Father. We thank you this morning, Jesus. We thank you for all that you do, Father. We ask, Father, that you embrace every son, every daughter. Comfort is what is needed in this world today, Jesus. Help us to understand that we need to turn to you in this time of confusion. That we need to get down on our knees in prayer. And even if we are prostrate in some place, Jesus, with the inability to move, Father, the inability to lift up our voices, Jesus, see our hearts and our minds, Father, that our intent is to glorify you in some way, form, or fashion, Jesus. There are someone that needs you this morning, Jesus. And we know that you are there. We pray for our pastor as he comes to preach your word. We pray for the men who come to sing. We pray for every church door that opens up in the name of Jesus this morning, amen, Father. We pray, Father, that somebody somewhere would take that first step to salvation and understand that the blood was shed for a reason, Jesus. Not the blood that's just shed on the street, needless, but the blood that was shed upon the cross, Father. The one that was pierced in the side, Father. The one that they spoke of long ago, Father, which is you, Jesus. We thank you again this morning, Father. And we say we love you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We greet you this morning in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. And as we are worshiping this morning on this Palm Sunday, we are thankful to have the members of Union Baptist Church worshiping in the sanctuary as well as by live streaming and certainly all of those who are worshiping with us. We thank God for each one of you. This is the day the Lord has made. and We have come to rejoice and be glad in it. From our Lord's Gospel, from Matthew chapter 21, the New Living Translation, we find these words. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with his coat beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, just say, the Lord needs them. And he will immediately let you take them. And so they took place. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's coat. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the coat to him and threw their garments over the coat and sat on it. He sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. In the King James Version, amen, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessing on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. This morning we cry out Hosanna. 
to the son of David. And in the tradition of union, amen, we will wave the palms, the choir and the congregation as we sing this great hymn of our faith, crown him with many crowns. To the glory of God. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Hark how the heavenly anthems frown, all music but his own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died. church and the audience amen worshiping said hosanna 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 to the son of david amen amen you may be seated the choir will sing praises unto our god
everybody, come on y'all, let's beat the devil. Saying the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, mm, Saying the blood of Jesus is against you. Everybody join in now. Come on, y'all. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. We don't need to down here no more. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Get up, 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 up. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. So let us give. So let us give God. Let us give God. So let us give God. And let us give God. So let us give God. Give my God. My God. And he will give you the victory. Now, I don't know about y'all, but God done brought us this far by faith. Yes. God has made a way out of no way. Yes. We ought to really give God all of the glory because he deserves it. Yes. He touched us with whew, and woke us this morning and we were clothed in our right mind. Amen. Well, ain't God wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Yeah. Come on, y'all. Give God the glory. Come on, y'all, give, give God the glory. Well, give God the glory. I know he will. And he will give you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And he will give you. I know he will. Yes, he will. And he will give you a victory. Amen. 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 Give God the praise. Give God a hand Amen. clap of praise. Amen. Give God the praise. Give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for joy this morning. Amen. It's time to hear what God has to say on this Palm Sunday. Turn your Bible to John, I'm sorry, to Romans chapter 5. And may we stand for the reading of God's word, Romans chapter 5, as we come with the third sermon in this series from the book of Romans. After which, chapter 5, verse 8 is the key verse. After we have read this key verse, we will pray and we will sing the great hymn of the faith, Lead Me to Calvary. From the New Living Translation, let us read prayerfully. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. This morning I want to preach from the subject, the blessings of justification by faith. The blessings of justification by faith. I want to repeat those words, the blessings of justification by faith. Our Father and our God, we thank you on this Lord's Day for another opportunity to worship you in your presence on this beautiful Palm Sunday. We thank you, O oh God, for your love towards each one of us. We thank you for watching over us last night and waking us up this morning and starting us on a new day. We're thankful for this opportunity to worship you in the sanctuary for those who are worshiping by live streaming and by Facebook. We thank you, Lord, for all the worshipers this morning. And now, Master, we pray that you just take charge of this time of preaching that you will fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, 
that we might be spirit filled, spirit possessed, spirit controlled, and our Father, that we might pray and uh, we might, our Father, preach under the anointing of the Holy Spirit as we go forward, Lord, to declare your word. We ask, our Father, that you will fill this vessel of mine and that we may be a vessel fitted to thy use, that your word will go forth, rightly divided. Bless, we pray, thy people. We pray, our Father, for those who need to make a decision for you this morning, that this will be the day of salvation. We praise you and thank you. And we ask that you would just now have your way in the name of Jesus the Christ. And for his sake, we all pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Lead me to Calvary, our hymn of preparation. Love the Lord said amen amen truly it is a blessing from God to be here this morning and certainly we invite you to pray with us as we come with this message amen the third message in the series from the book of Romans amen the blessings of justification by faith I want you to repeat those words again the blessings of justification by faith <clears throat> by faith. For me to begin this message this morning by noting one of the richest treasures in the Bible is the message of justification in the book of Romans. And yet even now many people in these perilous times have not come to see and understand the greatness of this spiritual uh, text from the book of Romans, from the fifth chapter on justification. Oswald Chambers, in recognizing the benefits of being justified by faith, is quoted saying, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, from Romans chapter 5 verse 10, through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. In writing this meditation, he continues by lifting up this personal message. He said, when I was, and when I turned to God, and by belief accept what God reveals, 
The miraculous atonement by the cross of Christ instantly places me into a right relationship with God. And as a result of the supernatural miracle of God's grace, I stand justified, not because I am sorry for my sin or because I have repented, but because of what Jesus has done. Let the church say, Amen. Yes, the power of God unto salvation is available to those who have placed their trust in Jesus Christ. He stands ready this morning, amen, to justify you. Allow me to ask uh, of you these questions as we come to celebrate Palm Sunday and prayerfully looking ahead uh, to Passion Week observance and next Sunday, uh, Resurrection Day worship celebration of our Lord who is risen indeed. I want to ask these two questions. The first question is, have you come, brothers and sisters, to terms with Calvary? Have we come to terms with Calvary? Do we know the blessings that God gives to us because of the cross of Calvary? Dr. Isaac Watts, on one occasion, was moved emotionally to write in reflecting on the message of the cross these words that Christians sing gladly today. At last and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die. Would he devote a sacred head for such a worm or a sinner as I? Was it for crimes that I have done he grown upon the tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. When Christ the mighty maker died for human creatures sin, amen, uh, amen. When we might the sun of darkness hide and shut his glories in. That fourth verse, but drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. Have we come to terms with the cross of Calvary? Have we considered our life in, in, in uh, comparison to what Christ did for us at Calvary? He paid an awful penalty. Can I get a witness? As we consider this text today, Dr. John MacArthur, uh, Bible scholar, teacher, author, uh, amen, and uh, certainly a man of, of God, has gone on record in his thoughts about this text by noting one of Satan's primary tactics against believers is that of making them doubt that salvation is secure forever or that it is real in their personal lives. Perhaps he notes for the reason uh, Paul described one of the key parts of the Christian's armor as the helmet of salvation, provided to surround and protect the mind against doubt, against insecurity concerning Christ's redemption. This is both, he notes, objective and subjective. Amen. Church, say amen. First, salvation, he continues, can be shown by the objective testimony of Scripture. The issue, he notes, of eternal security, or once saved, always saved, has been hotly debated throughout much of church history. Everyone agrees that the truth or falsehood of that doctrine is of immense uh, importance, but it's also critical to the believer to recognize the evidence that a man, he, a man, actually has the real salvation when one comes to Jesus Christ. He continues by noting once security is established as a fact of salvation, then the assurance must be maintained in the heart of the Christian subjectively. In continuing his thoughts on uh, this text, in chapter 3 and 4 of Romans, Paul establishes unequivocally 
that salvation comes only on the basis of God's grace working through man's faith. Man's only part in becoming saved is to receive forgiveness and reconciliation freely in the faith from God's gracious hand. The person who trusts in anything else, including obedience to God's own law, cannot be saved. He concludes his notes and his thoughts on this particular text by noting the apostle has established the fact that faith has always been the only way of salvation. Abraham, the physical progenitor of all Jews and their uh, supreme example of a man right with God did not accomplish that relationship through his good works, but only through his faith. Quoting Genesis 15 and 6, Paul declares that Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Let the church say amen. Now, as we carry uh, and go forward, that is, with this message of justification from Romans chapter 5, we need to note that the word justification is the key word in this chapter. I want you to say that the key word in this chapter. In defining this word, Justification means to count someone righteous. It means to reckon, it means to credit, it means to account, it means to judge, uh, to treat, or to look upon as righteous. Amen. And then justification, it is noted, is the work of God on the cross by which one is declared righteous. It speaks of an act of God's grace in which he forgives us of our sins and receives us into his fellowship. I want us to further note that the word justified or made right, I want you to say that made right, is one of the favorite words, amen, of the Apostle Paul. He loves to use this throughout the scriptures and certainly in this epistle of Romans. Let the church say hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah to his name. Let us note in our text from Romans chapter 5, the Apostle Paul lifts up several blessings or several results, or you might even say several benefits in a, 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 a chain of truth that binds true believers eternally with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, completely apart from any effort or merit on the believer's part. Let the church say hallelujah. Those links, amen, uh, 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 are in this order, and I want you to take note of them. The first is the believer's peace with God, which is found in verse 1. I want you to say that believer's peace with God. Secondly, uh, Paul lifts up in verse 2, uh, his standing in grace. I want you to say that, his standing in grace. Then thirdly, in verses 2 through 5 of our text this morning, Paul lifts up the believer's hope of glory. His hope of glory. I want you to say that. His hope of glory. And then fourthly, in verses uh, 2 through uh, 5, he lifts up the, his possession uh, of God's love. In fact, it's really verses uh, uh, 2 through 8, and the key verse is verse 8. God's love. I want you to say that. God's love. And then fifthly, Amen. Paul lifts up the certainty of, of uh, the believer's deliverance in glory. The certainty of the believer's deliverance in glory. And uh, that's verses 9 and 10. And in verse 11, Paul lifts up the joy of the Lord. Amen. The joy that believers have in the Lord. In verse 11. I want you to read with me now, amen, our text. Our text verses 1 through 11. And as we do, I want you to take note that, amen, in addition to those, amen, links or chains that we cited earlier, really to capture this text, there are three basic, uh, amen, truths that are lifted up in our text this morning. The first is verses 1 and 2, the joy of personal fellowship with God. I want you to read with me, amen, as Paul lifts up the fact that there is joy in having a personal fellowship 
relationship with God. Let's read. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Read on, verse 2. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing his glory, God's glory. Now, I want us to note in verse 1 and 2 again that we see the believer's peace with God in verse 1, and we see in verse 2 the believer standing in grace, uh, the grace of God. Amen. Verse 2 again, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Let the church say hallelujah. The joy of personal fellowship with God is what Paul is lifting up here in an overview of these two verses. There is a joy in being justified. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? We have peace with God, and we stand in the grace of God. I want you to say that we have peace with God, and we stand in the grace of God. Amen. His grace. Amen. His amazing grace. Can I get a witness? Now, secondly, in verses 3 through 8, I want us to take note that we have basically here an overview of the joy of a new meaning for life. The joy of having a new meaning for life. Each believer having a new meaning on life and for life. Let the church say hallelujah. Now let's read together verses 3 through 8. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. Let's read on. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Verse 5. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Verse 6, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Again, in verses 2 through 5, uh, we find specifically the believer's hope of glory. And then we find the believer standing in God's love. I want you to say that standing in God's love. The joy of a new life when, you, when we are justified, when we are made right with God. Amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Amen. We have that kind of joy that we can sing songs such as, This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Can I get a witness? Amen. The world didn't give it, and the world didn't, can't take it away. Church say hallelujah. Now thirdly, thirdly in our text, verses 9 through 11, we find an overview of the joy of a new sense of eternal security. Amen. This is basically what we are reading here and what Paul is lifting up, the joy of a new, amen, sense of eternal security. Amen. Specifically, the certainty of deliverance when we pass away and we, amen, are ushered into his presence. And then, thirdly, um, I'm sorry. Secondly, the joy in the Lord. The joy in the Lord. Verse 11. Let's read together verses 9 through 11. Let's read. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Verse 10. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. And verse 11. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because of our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. He has made us friends of God. Let the church say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, it is vital to take note of 
of and remember th this thought from uh, verse 1 and 2. When we are made righteous by faith, we are to have a full assurance of our salvation, both in this life and for all eternity. Uh, Dr. Gene Getz notes, Paul used the word therefore to connect what he had taught about being made righteous by faith and what happens the moment we are saved. As believers, we are, amen, saved and, and at that moment, very moment, God gives us his peace. We're no longer enemies of God because of our sin. Can I get a witness? We have been, amen, reconciled to our eternal God and nothing can separate us as Paul lifts up in the 8th chapter of Romans, from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let the church say hallelujah. Our eternal salvation is secure. Amen. And it's enabling us to rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Our eternal security and destiny has been sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. And so when we are born again, God gives us his spirit. We are baptized by the Holy Spirit. Church, say hallelujah. Amen. He comes and dwells us, to live within us. Amen. And to empower us, to lead us and guide us. Amen. And to mature us in the faith. Can I get a witness? Let us note in our text, Romans chapter 5, verses 1, amen, through 11. The Apostle Paul lifts up several blessings of several results of several benefits in a truth, a, a chain of truth, amen. And again, we have covered those this morning, amen. It's interesting to note that the word atonement occurs only once in the New Testament, found in Romans chapter five, verse 11, the word atonement, amen. Romans chapter five, verse 11. However, other major references to the doctrine of atonement or the teachings of atonement are found in such scriptures as 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Romans chapter 5, again, verse 6 through 11, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 through 9 and verse 17, amen, 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. If you turn and look with me, uh, to Romans chapter 5, verses 9 through 11, we find the Apostle Paul, amen, in this epistle, writing to the church at Rome, and he shares with them a very important point about the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm reading from the Living Bible paraphrase scripture, amen, verses 9 through 11, amen. We find these words. And since by his blood he did all this for us as sinners, how much more will we do for us? How much more will he do for us now that he has declared us not guilty? Now he will save us from all of God's wrath to come. And since when we were his enemies, we were brought back to God by the death of his son, what blessings he must have for us now that we are his friends and he's living within us. Verse 11, now we rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done in dying for our sins, making us friends of God. The wise comments of Dr. Charles R. Swindoll uh, are important to hear on this last uh, truth that we've lifted up in our text. Believers have the promise of deliverance, and they have the joy in the Lord as a part of the benefits, the fringe benefits of that, of being justified or being made right with God. Dr. Charles R. Swindoll, on these verses are, uh, have noted, Paul's use of the term save includes far more than preservation from the torments of hell. It means preservation from all things that are opposed to God. 
including any future sin that threatens to keep us from enjoying a new life in the territory called grace. And this assurance, he continues, amen, uh, Paul declared allows us to access to the third level of joy. We exude in God. We joy, uh, amen, we exude, we are made happy and glad in God. Let the church say amen. Mature believers, he continues, experience a kind of joy that transcends all other considerations because it is anchored in their peace with God. Hallelujah. Their reconciled relationship with the Almighty. They live with joyful confidence despite the afflictions of a fallen world, despite the physical consequences of past sin, even despite the failure to live as they ought. He continues, they live by the word of an old hymn Swindoll uh, lifts up that he learned as a child. And the words of that hymn are, then we shall be where we would be. Then we shall be what we should be. Things that are not now, nor could be, soon shall be our own. Let the church say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Swindle continues. Things are not yet as they should be in this world. Can I get a witness? The world does not operate according to God's way. Can I get a witness? We still have too much of the old nature within us. Can I get a witness? Nevertheless, having been declared justified or made right with God by faith, we have, brothers and sisters, peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who bled and died on the cross that whosoever will, amen, may come to him by faith if they believe that he is the Messiah. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We have opportunity this morning to thrive with assured confidence in the day when all things will be made right. And that day is coming when God will make everything that's wrong right. Can I get a witness? He has his time. Amen. And prophecies must be fulfilled. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? He said in his word, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Can I get a witness? It's interesting to note the words and the thoughts and the comments of Dr. John R. W. Stout in the New Testament series uh, editor of the book entitled, The Bible Speaks Today, The Message to the Ephesians. Dr. Stout is recorded saying, I sometimes wonder if good and thoughtful people have ever been depressed about the human predicament than they are today. Of course, he continues, every age is bound to have a blurred vision of its own problems because it is too close to them to get them to focus. And every generation breeds new prophets of doom. Nevertheless, he continues, the media enabled us to grasp the worldwide extent of contemporary evil. Can I get a witness? And it is this which makes the modern scene look so dark. It is partly the escalating of problems, economic problems, population growth, the spoilation of natural resources, unemployment, hunger, Partly the spread of social conflict, racism, tribalism, and class struggle, disintegrating family life, and partly the absence of accepted moral guidelines leading to violence, dishonesty, sexual promiscuity. He continues, man seems incapable of managing his own affairs or, if, or of creating a just, free, humane, and tranquil society. Man seems to be incapable. For man himself is imperfect, he notes, and man is faulty. Against this background of our world today, Ephesians chapter two, 
amen, verses 1 through 10, stands out in striking relevance, he notes. Paul first plums the depths of pessimism about man and then rises to the height of optimism about God. The key verses out of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, we should know. For by grace we are saved through faith. And it's not of ourselves, it is the what? Gift of God, not of works, lest any man should what? Boast. Amen. Paul does this in this passage. Paul uh, uh, does in this passage paint a vivid contrast between what man is by nature and what he can become by the grace of God. Let the church say hallelujah. 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 And so, as we, amen, continue in this message, we need to remember that the grace of God is a blessing. The atoning work of Jesus Christ, amen, solidified our faith in Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Because without the shedding of blood, Hebrews 9 and 22, there is no salvation. There is no regeneration. There is no justification. There is no sanctification. Can I get a witness? There is no church. And there is no gospel to preach. Can I get a witness? Thank God for the atoning work of Jesus Christ, whereby the Father gave his approval. Can I get a witness? of his son. Can I get a witness? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I said whosoever, believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Can I get a witness? He that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed on the only begotten Son of God. Can I get a witness? Thank God. Thank God that Jesus came all the way down from heaven through 42 generations. Can I get a witness on a mission to redeem a man, mankind, from the curse of the broken law? Can I get a witness? I said Jesus came all the way down, amen, to do, to do what nobody else could do. Can I get a witness? And so we do declare, as Isaac Watts did, that it was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Can I get a witness? And now I'm happy all the day. Are there any joyous people present this morning, worshiping this morning? Can you shout glory? Glory, glory to the Lamb of God. Can I get a witness? Thank God Jesus paid it all. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Suffering uh, produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. Uh, and hope does not put us uh, to shame uh, or disappoint us uh, because God's love uh, has been poured out uh, on us uh, and into our hearts uh, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I thank God uh, that Jesus uh, came uh, to redeem uh, this world. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, he willingly uh, died uh, on the cross. Uh, nobody uh, took his life. Uh, he laid it down uh, that he might take it up. Uh, 
Can I get a witness? Uh, it was at the cross. Uh, at the cross. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, somebody else said it like this. Uh, it was down uh, at the cross uh, where my Savior uh, died. Uh, down uh, where from cleansing uh, from sin uh, I cried. Uh, there uh, to my heart uh, was the blood uh, applied. Uh, this morning uh, we're singing not only Hosanna, uh, but we're singing glory. Uh, glory. Uh, can you shout glory? Uh, glory uh, to his name. Uh, do you love him? Uh, can you say yes? Uh, do you praise him? Uh, can you say yes? Uh, do you believe uh, that glory uh, is up ahead? Uh, then say yes. Uh, yes. Yes. When this earthly house uh, of a tabernacle uh, is dissolved, uh, we have another building. Uh, a house. A house. A house. Not made by hands. Eternal. Eternal. Eternal in the heavens. Jesus made it possible. The blessings of justification have been given to us as we have come to faith in Jesus Christ. As the choir prepares to sing, we thank you, Lord. For the precious, precious gift of making us right with you and for justification becoming a reality because of you. We thank you that not only did you die, but on the third day morning, the Father was pleased and raised you, the Son from the dead. We thank you. We bless your name. Lord, we pray for those who have not made peace with you that today will be the day that they will bow their heads in prayer and call on your name and by faith trust you and say to you, this day I am acknowledging that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You're the Savior of the world. You died on the cross for my sins. And I receive you by faith into my heart. May each one who prays that prayer know that on the authority of your word, you will come. You will come into their life. You will justify them. And then you will continue to shape them, mold them, make them after your will. God, we love you this morning. We thank you for the blessing, the benefit of justification. Thank you for all of the blessings, for your grace, for your love, for your peace, for your joy, for the reality that you are God. And one day we will have our glorified bodies and we will live with you in heaven where we will praise your name down through eternal ages, world without end. We bless your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. As the choir sings, we extend an invitation to Christian discipleship. You may come this morning here in the sanctuary to rededication for prayer. If you're here and there's a need in your life, we invite you to trust God and to know that God already knows what's on your heart. And if you just speak to him and ask him to hear your cries, even the unspoken petitions, he will do that because he already knows what's on your heart, what you need right now. If you backslid, you need to come home to God.
Resurrection Day celebration on next Sunday. May we be in prayer this week. May we remember the message, the blessings of justification by faith. God loves us. And God has provided for us his son, that whosoever believeth in the name of Jesus Christ shall be saved. God help you if you have not made that decision to do it today. Because tomorrow is not promised. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Praise God.